Hello everybody, I'm Daniel from Unique UK. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to go over um, the new updates for the Typhoon H and the ST16. The update is available to download on unique.com and unique UK. It's going to put your flight controller on 1.29 and it's going to put your ST16 on B25, which is the latest update from Unique. It's a really fantastic update, gives you tons of new functions, new features, and is a must for all you guys who own a Typhoon H. The first thing you need to do is update your ST16 to B25. What that's going to allow you to do from now and all future updates is have something called an OTA update or a wireless update, meaning that the ST16 will search the, our servers for the latest update and will do the update automatically. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to update the ST16 to the latest, up, uh, latest firmware. Now, you can do that through two ways. We can directly plug the SD16 into our computer and we can transfer the file across, or we can place it on our SD card, which is what I've done already. So, I'm gonna play, pop the SD card into the bottom of the SD, SD16. Turn on, and then allow the system to boot up. When the SD card with the firmware update is in the bottom of the SD16, you're ready to go with your update. You must make sure that the transmitter, or the ST16, is above 50%. As close to 100% is better. And also, whenever you type, update the Typhoon H, you need to make sure you do this with a full battery. So, once the SD card with the update on is in the bottom of the ST16, the first thing you need to do is go System Settings, select OK to exit the flight mode, About Controller, Update ST16. The update will take longer and we will start your machine. Click on OK and then the update process will begin. The firmware update should take for the SD16 around about four or five minutes. When the SD16 has finished its update, it will reboot on this screen. You might notice the screen's a little bit different. The next point is really, really important. What I need to do is I need to clear the data from the SD16. Okay, so once this uh, update has happened, you need to select your language. I'm going to select English. The next thing I need to do is go into Pad. I need to go into my Applications, into Settings, and then I need to click on Apps. I scroll to the right twice, and then I'm going to scroll down to Flight Mode. Once I'm in Flight Mode, I need to clear my data. Okay. Once that's done, I press back, and then back to the home screen. Once I'm back at the home screen, I will need to select my language again. The default camera will be set as Seago 3, so I need to go System Settings, Camera Select, Seago 3 Pro, Select, OK. Then press back to the main screen, and you're ready to go. Now my SD16 is done, it's ready to go. And because I've removed the flight data, I now need to bind to my Typhoon H. So, I'm going to turn, turn on the Typhoon H. Really, really important, you must remove the props during any update. So we advise that. Also, very, very important, make sure that your Typhoon H is at 100% battery capacity. So, binding procedure, I'm just gonna rock forward twice. After I've done that, I'll turn to the back and you can see I've got my fast orange LED, which is my binding mode on my Typhoon H. After I've done that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into system settings. I'm gonna to go to model select. You notice now I have our commercial machine on the, on the SD16, which is our H920. But we're gonna select Typhoon H, we're gonna select OK. We're gonna to go to refresh and you'll see the machine and the camera both pop up. I'm gonna click on those and select bind. It's gonna ask me for our password. Our password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And then I'm gonna select okay. What's gonna happen now, my SD16 is gonna to bind to my Typhoon H, ready for the next part of the update. The next thing you must do is you must remove the SD card from the SD16 and place it into the camera on the Seago 3 Plus. This is because the, when you download the information, it needs to have somewhere to store the data before it uploads. 
So, I've done that already, so the SD card is now in, inside the camera. Once the Typhoon H has been bound to the SC16 and you have a SD card in the Seago 3 Plus camera, what we can do then is we can start the wireless update. So, system settings, OK to exit the screen, about controller, Typhoon H, if I click on update, it's going to make sure my remote battery is above 50%, which for me it is. Click on OK. It's now checking my firmware, and it says that there's no firmware on the SD card. So, if I click on OK, it now gives me an, uh, a bunch of available networks that I can connect to to download the firmware. So if I scroll down, I can find my phone, because I'm using my phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot, and I'm going to click on connect. Put in the password and select OK. What happens now is it connects to the Wi-Fi, and then it will start searching the servers to let you know that your firmware is out of date. So it's letting me know what's new on the firmware update, and I just select download, and the firmware will download automatically. After the download has succeeded, the update will happen by itself. So when the Typhoon H has finished its update of the camera, the gimbal and the flight controller, what you'll do is you'll get a firmware update complete on screen. So you're just going to select OK. And it's going to take you back into the update screen. You're just going to press back and then everything will connect as normal. So the whole process of updating the SD16 and the Typhoon H should take around about 10 minutes. Now, it's really, really important when you have finished the update, when everything's up to date, what you need to do is you must calibrate your compass and you must calibrate your accelerometer. When you calibrate the compass, please make sure you do it in an open field away from any metallic objects. Turn off your mobile phone, okay, and make sure you do it away from any metal. When you uh, finish that, you must make sure you calibrate the accelerometer. To do this, it's very, very easy. It's just on the system settings. I'm not going to calibrate the compass in here because we're obviously inside and it's the wrong place to do it. But when we calibrate the accelerometer, it's very, very easy. All I need to do is I need to go to settings on the side. I go to calibration and you can see where it says the accelerometer. Now it's very, very important that you calibrate the accelerometer with the machine is not moving and on a flat surface. So either on the floor, okay, or on a table, but do not touch the machine while this process is happening. Now, I'm going to calibrate the accelerometer for you. What will happen is, it will go through a series of beeps. The beeps will get faster, and then the machine will restart. So basically, your accelerometer is a gyro inside the copter, which determines whether the copter is flat or not. So if that's out of calibration, the copter will think it's on a flat level, but in reality, it will be slightly off and will cause the machine to drift slightly. So we want to make sure that that's nice and calibrated and the machine knows that it's at a zero degrees. So to access my new features, first thing I need to do is to put it in photo mode and then the SD16 will change over to stills mode. Once I've done that, I can select settings in the bottom right hand corner. A couple of features are going to be turned off for video. The first feature I get new is on photo, I can shoot JPEG or I can shoot DNG and now I can shoot in DNG and JPEG at the same time. Scrolling down, I have the ability to now add a histogram. I can move the histogram wherever I want it to on screen. For this I'm going to put it out the way in the top right hand corner. Okay, But for the purpose of this video I'm just going to turn it back off. I also have a metering mode whereby I can have spot metering, just to show you that, like so. Or I can have it center meeting or average. Photo mode at the bottom, I now have single, burst, time lapse, and panorama. If I select burst mode, it gives me another option on the right hand side. If I select that, you'll notice I can select three, five, or seven shots on my burst mode. Also, when I'm selecting panoramic mode, it gives me the option to have one layer where the camera will shoot 360 degrees and will shoot eight photos, or two layers 
and the SD and the camera will shoot 16 photos on the 360 degree rotation and give me two layers making the shot twice as deep.